Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today we are going to talk about Betashit Geometry and here's a question, which of the following are true of Betashit structures in protein? And you have to check all these variants, all these statements. Now I want you to take a look at this picture, would you be able to tell if this Betashit is made by parallel strands or anti-parallel? Here you see with blue color is amino group shown here with red color carboxylic and is shown. Now we can add loops. For example, here is going to be amino end, so N terminus. Here we see carboxylic group and amino group here. That means this is anti-parallel and we can add one loop here, another loop here and C terminus here and terminus represent beginning of the polypeptide chain and C terminus the end of the polypeptide chain and stand for the amino group first amino group and C stand for the carboxylic group or last uh, group in the last amino acid here and strands are going to be anti-parallel so would go in this direction here in this direction here and in this direction here. So now you see why we call them anti-parallel. But what helped me to recognize that this is anti-parallel structure? Actually, this hydrogen bonds. The pattern tells me whether it is anti-parallel or parallel. Take a look at another picture where you can see two variants of the hydrogen bonding in, for example, anti-parallel beta sheet and parallel beta sheet and a mixture of both. For example, take a look. This is exactly the same pattern as we see here. And the pattern in parallel beta sheet may remind some of you Christmas tree, you see, or pyramids stuck on top of each other. Now let's add loops here. So we can add one loop here, another loop here, and another loop here. Now take a look what the pattern of loops are going to be in parallel beta sheet. So the first one would be like this, the second one would be like this, and the third one would be like this. As you see, loops in parallel beta sheets would be much bigger than loops in anti-parallel beta sheet. Now let's take a look what kind of uh, loop pattern we are going to see in this mixed beta sheet. And the first loop is going to be like this. This is anti-parallel and this is also two anti-parallel strands. But next is going to be parallel. So this is going to be a loop here like this. Another one is also going to be parallel. So we are going to have this large loop here and then again anti-parallel small loop here. In this example, we suggest that this is going to be the same polypeptide chain. But is it possible that, for example, this strand is going to be of the different polypeptide? So let's say here's another polypeptide chain and what we would see in this example. In this case, we are not going to see this loop, but we are going to see this pattern of hydrogen bonding between two adjusting anti-parallel polypeptide chains, which are going to be different. And when two different polypeptide chains would go in the same direction, we are going to see in this case this pattern of hydrogen bonding, which we can find in the parallel beta sheet. Now we can return to our statements. Again, the question is which of the following are true of beta sheet structure in a protein? Statement A, beta sheets are formed by one or multiple polypeptide chains. And this is true. And we can circle this statement as true. Next statement. Beta sheets are secondary structures in proteins. There are two types of secondary structures, alpha helix and 
beta pleated sheets. So this is also correct statement. We can circle this statement as well. And statement C in beta sheet polypeptide strands can be parallel and anti-parallel. And this is also correct statement. So we can circle this statement. And the last one in beta sheets, hydrogen bonds connect polypeptide chains. And this is also true statement. We can circle this variant as well. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.